A few weeks back, I was talking about vaping with a friend of mine who asked me if I wasn't concerned about the spate of deaths uh, that have happened recently due apparently to vape pens. As of this month, more than 2,000 people have uh, reported lung injury to the CDC and 42 people have died. I told my friend that I personally was not worried for my own health because I vape cannabis flowers uh, that I couldn't really see being dangerous in any way. People have been smoking cannabis flowers for several millennia uh, without a single person ever dying from it. And the only difference between smoking it and vaping it is that you inhale less burnt shit into your lungs when you vape it. Uh, with vaping, nothing is set on fire and you're not breathing in uh, paper or other things that you might be wrapping it in or adding it to it. It's just a fun little dried out flower that you're inhaling. Um, I pointed out to my friend that the problem was probably related to the vapes that kids were using uh, that are filled with an unregulated THC containing substance with an added fake snickerdoodle flavor for pizzazz. Sure enough, the CDC has just identified the most likely culprit, and it's vitamin E. But Rebecca, you cry, vitamins are supposed to be good for us. Yes, they are, unless you're taking way too many of them because you think it's going to fix your otherwise shitty diet, or if you vaporize it and put it in your lungs. Vitamin E oil is commonly used these days to beef up vapes on the black market, reducing the amount of THC in a vape, but increasing the total amount of product, making customers think that they're getting a good deal. It only started showing up in the last year or so, and uh, it went from being completely unheard of to being in about half of all cartridges sold. But it turns out it's not terribly healthy to put fats in your lungs. They get all sticky and gross and they uh, activate your immune system, which goes insane and starts attacking your own lung tissue in an attempt to remove those sticky fats. These deaths would not have happened were it not for two overwhelming forces, capitalism and prohibition. The capitalism part is one of the big reasons why people have died due to drugs for ages. It's why people cut cocaine with laundry detergent and heroin with cheaper fentanyl. People want more money and too often they don't mind other people dying for that. The other part is prohibition. While tobacco vaping products are very popular, and while several states have legalized THC vapes, the people who got sick were much more likely to have bought THC vapes from illicit sources, about nine times more likely than people who didn't get sick. Here in California, dispensaries are rushing to verify that the vapes they sell have not been cut with this oil and that they're safe. Meanwhile, counterfeit vapes will continue to be sold on the street without concern for what's in them. When we make a drug illegal, people continue to seek it out, uh, but they are then left to the whims of those who will put money over safety because they have no reason to care. There's no oversight. There's no sunlight. If a customer dies here or there, it might hurt business, but it's rare enough. And if no one links it back to you, it's no big deal. And it's hard to link things back when you've got drug users who are scared to go public and there's just, there's no paper trail. You might wonder if all the press this is getting, though, might lead people to think twice before buying illegal vapes. The answer, unfortunately, is probably not. And we know this thanks to history, thanks to alcohol prohibition in the U.S. in the 1920s. When the U.S. outlawed alcohol, alcoholism soared, uh, as did the number of deaths from people drinking tainted industrial alcohol. The result was not what the drafters of Prohibition had hoped for at all. They were shocked that people were continuing to find ways to make or steal, denature, and drink alcohol, even when it tasted terrible and even when it made them sick. So by 1926, Coolidge's government tried a new trick. 
they purposefully made industrial alcohol much, much deadlier than it otherwise was. Allow me to list some of the additives that the federal government put into alcohol on purpose, courtesy of Deborah Bloom, author of The Poisoner's Handbook. Kerosene and brucine, a plant alkaloid closely related to strychnine, gasoline, benzene, cadmium, iodine, zinc, mercury, salts, nicotine, ether, formaldehyde, chloroform, camphor, carbolic acid, quinine, and acetone. Over the next five years, the government's actions would go on to kill upwards of 10,000 Americans. Throughout that time, people like Charles Norris, the uh, chief medical examiner of New York City, were extremely outspoken about what was happening. Uh, Norris publicized every single death and constantly called upon the government to stop what they were doing, but they didn't, and people kept drinking and they kept dying. Bloom quotes him saying, The government knows it is not stopping drinking by putting poison in alcohol, yet it continues its poisoning processes, heedless of the fact that people determined to drink are daily absorbing that poison. Knowing this to be true, the United States government must be charged with the moral responsibility for the deaths that poisoned liquor causes, although it cannot be held legally responsible. And the government just never really learned their lesson from that, even though they did eventually stop Uh, putting poison in alcohol, and they ended prohibition. But in the 1970s, they then sprayed Mexican cannabis fields with an herbicide, hoping that the toxin would discourage people from using it. Guess what? It didn't. I'd like to think that we've come a long way since then, but we do have a former vice president and current potential Democratic candidate for president, Joe Biden, announcing that he will never end prohibition of cannabis because it's, quote, a gateway drug. The idea of a gateway anything is a slippery slope argument. Uh, is weed the gateway or is it alcohol, which is much easier to obtain and much more dangerous? As in, you can actually die from drinking alcohol that is totally pure and safe for consumption, which you simply cannot do by consuming cannabis. Prohibition of drugs simply does not work, and it's time that we stop treating addicts like criminals and start making recreational drugs as safe as possible, while providing universal health care that will actually help people with addictions, as opposed to just throwing them in prison where they learn how to be better criminals.